right? And I'm going to try and control my emotions, all right? I've been to a child death investigator school, and I've seen photos and images of children that have been malnourished. And I'm telling you right now, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. Oh, no, really? Yes. This is Seth Welch and Tatiana Fusari, parents of nine-month-old Mary Welch. They were accused of killing their own daughter and child abuse. The girl died of malnutrition and dehydration. At the time of death, she weighed only 8 pounds. It all happened in 2018, but the interrogation videos of Seth and Tatiana have only become available now. Today we'll see the first interrogation of Tatiana Fusari, the mother. It happened right after the discovery of the baby's body, and we'll try to understand what happened. Tatiana, if you want to have a seat in here, right in there, and then I'll be back in a few minutes to chat with you, okay? Okay. So, the investigator is trying to relax the suspect and make her feel that they want to help her here. You know, there's a little bit of drive here. Do you need to, need to, uh, need to use the restroom at all? I don't. Oh, okay. Need some water? Uh, man. For example, now we see the girl was going to cry in front of the police officer, but left alone, calmed down quite quickly, even started yawning. Hi. Hello. Tatiana, this is my supervisor. We've seen each other, but I don't think we've met. I'm sorry for your loss. I know that uh, obviously the last thing you want to be doing is this. We haven't spoke yet. I know you've already spoken with Jason. Uh, my name is Jason as well. Um, some of the same stuff that he's already talked about, I wasn't there when you guys spoke, so I'd like to go over some of that. Um, really, what I kind of just like to do is just uh, to get a better understanding of how we are here today and kind of go back a few years even just to get to know you and your family a little bit. So, do you go by Tantiana or do you have a nickname? Tantiana. Tantiana? Okay. You can just give us an easy nickname. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. How many children do you have? I'm sorry, five. Three. Three. Okay. Yep. <laughs> right. And is yeah. Oh, and and Mary, how old is your oldest? Four. And how? So, um, at the scene there, I was told that. Verbal? Is that true that he doesn't, or no. he's very verbal? He's very verbal. Oh, I, I don't know. Someone, and you know how he gets mixed, and, uh, you whisper in one person's ear and as it goes down the chain, uh -huh. maybe he was just being shy. So that's he tends to get shy, but... Yeah, he did, he did some high-fiving for me, but... Um, he knows lots of words, he's just, um, sometimes Big Sister can be a little dominating, so maybe that's what it is. him, but... Um, and probably all the commotion probably really made him shy, and didn't, yes. I didn't want to... So maybe they were just saying he was non-verbal right now, maybe that's what Possibly. it was. Medical issues or any, nothing like all. that. Okay. Not at all. And for is she in any kind of daycare? Does she go? No. Does she have preschool? Um, no, I homeschool. I have my um my degree in early childhood oh, you education. Oh, okay. So I Good for you. thought I just from being at home at the farm, I can at least give them an initial education before yeah. we yeah. decide to send them off to grade school. Absolutely. So, the thing is that Seth and Tatiana had three children, two older ones and baby Mary. At the time of the tragedy, Tatiana was pregnant with the first child. While Tatiana is behaving as a mother who has lost a child should. But let's watch further. Absolutely, yes. Okay, like in what kind of stuff? She is fluent in her alphabet, her numbers at least up to 20. Yeah. Um, although she knows other numbers like 160, but not in sequence. Um, okay. She's practicing her writing. Mm -hmm. um, she just has a little issue with the numbers. They get a little backwards. But, um, okay. She knows how to spell words like hi, cat, dog. Oh. Um, she knows the list that starts with E. She kind of do better than Jason. <laughs> the hi and the cat and dog part. Um, <laughs> so, um, a doctor that she sees, does she have a primary doctor? Not anymore. We okay. did have, she's great and everything. We just, uh, we only go if there's an issue and there just hasn't been. Oh, good. When, when she was two? 
Okay. And what was that for? A checkup. Do you know what clinic he's with? It's his own practice. Okay. Um, I know it's in Rockford. Uh -huh. You remember where in Rockford? Okay. That's right. No big deal. So she she was there for her two year checkup. Mm -hmm. Was she ever there prior to the two year checkup? Yes. For uh, what eighteen month checkup. Eighteen month. Any other one? Uh no, we Okay, so so prior to the eighteen month checkup she was with a different doctor. Yes. Do you don't remember that? Okay. Usual one that um called CPS on us because we Interesting. The children are homeschooled. They are only taken to the doctor in emergencies and to a private one. Tatiana also said that she practiced home births. Maybe six months? Six months. Yeah, I won't hold you to it. I know it's a while ago. And so at early six... Early enough for her to get... It was, we were, um, yeah, early enough for her to get her vaccinations and um, we were consistent with it. And then afterwards, we, we just did a lot of research and we didn't feel the need to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. William Chun was very um, gracious with us and understanding, and she's yeah. like, you actually don't have to do that at all. Mm -hmm. Six times. Okay. We'll do four to six if you want. Okay, and so at what visit, obviously it was probably the last visit, mm -hmm. is when he recommended the helmet, the yeah. head shaping. But so there was never any concern about the shape of her head from zero to 18 months? No, it, and it, that's why it was such a concern for us as to why he would just bring this up out of out of nowhere. And so, what was the problem with the shape of her head, according he to him? He said it was it was off. It was just not circular. And I mean, I wasn't offended. I was just taken aback. And then um, my uh, Seth found out that they it's commission based with these products that they try and push. Uh -huh. So. Um, we don't know specifically. This is here today. Right, sure. But we think that we'll he's it. trying to push the helmet. It was a three thousand dollar helmet for that and called CPS and said that we were being neglectful or, or something or other. Okay. And uh, then that's when we went to. So was it the first time he ever pushed that helmet? Was it right around the eighteen month? That's the first I time he. I believe so. Mm, okay. Unless he spoke to Seth otherwise, but I I doubt it. I've never even heard of a head shaping helmet. Have you, have you ever seen young children? It, it looks like um, some children with Down syndrome will wear it, and it's just, it like cuts here, and it cuts like that, and it's big and clunky. Maybe I have seen that. Maybe I have, yeah. It, it looks quite invasive, and I just am heavy, and I just want her to like, get neck problems or back problems, mm. she didn't need it. Right, 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 yeah. How does that work? Wonderful. Was that, was that a choice? Yeah. Was that like... Um, what do they call it, like a uh, midwife or something? Yeah, Mid it was a home birth. Okay, and so how does that work? When you choose to have, first off, I mean, why did you go from being from her in a hospital and then some transformation here where you said we want to do um, um, the midwife? Yeah, yeah the, um, being at the hospital was very invasive. They uh with me. After she was born, they wanted her out of the room. They wanted us there for three days um, because uh, apparently I pushed out a lot more fluid than they were expecting. So she coughed. And I'm like, oh, we need to keep her protesting. And then um, my husband makes it because they just wanted to charge us more. To keep it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Conspiracy theory, yada, yada, whatever. Yeah, you never know, though, right? But exactly, right. you don't. So I just think they wanted to keep us there for three more days, and then we had... They wouldn't like allow me to see her except to nurse, and they were like, "Oh, you can just give her food here, and don't worry, you can rest." I don't want to see my baby. And yeah. then they would have like Wick come in and give me information, and then you want to have newborn portraits? No, can I just go home? Right, baby? right, right. So we just didn't want any more. So that just turned you off to the. And having a home birth right after uh, I gave birth, Seth went out and. Bought me a pizza and I ate that whole pizza. <laughs> right after hey, the bonus. Right on my couch. So, so you're, how does the midwife work? Is that through a hospital, through a clinic? How do you reach? Yeah. How does this? How does uh, this work? Google. <laughs> oh, okay. I just searched on midwives in the area, or um, also there are Facebook groups like Home Births um, in West Michigan, Cedar Springs um, Home Birthing, and I just asked a lot of different women for advice. Um, so now, what is a what what is a midwife? Is it someone that knows what they're doing, or could I be a midwife? Uh, you cannot be a midwife. Okay. You need medical training. Well, okay, that's a, that's what and I was wondering. So they is, is it like actually 
A certification? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. um, and she's been training with her grandmother. Excuse me. Well, that's all right. Who's been training with her grandmother, which I trust that I like the whole genealogy. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. She's been she gave birth family. to all three of her kids at her home and mm. um, has been doing it for about 40 years before me. So. so when a midwife becomes involved in your pregnancy, how early on do they become involved? As early or as late as you'd like. Which, so what? Okay. Because I was just, I mean, I was fit as a fiddle. I didn't. Right, yep. And anything. this wasn't your first child and you weren't. Yeah. Concerned and, yep. and then working on the farm, I mean, I didn't, I barely gained weight and I was just mm -hmm. weeding all the time. Like, it wasn't a necessity. I only went to see her to get um, ultrasound. And but did she know you were coming? Did she know, like, after did I you? contacted her. So, when did you did you contact her just at the two months or did you, yeah. like, set it up, like, hey, I'm going to be contacting you in a couple months? No, it was, hi, uh, are you available to see me? I know you might be busy with other clients, but mm -hmm. I'm going to get birth soon. Um, so, what do they do when they come? What's her first? First, like, I the take. I have appointments at her house every two weeks, depending on the time mm -hmm. of uh, how far along I am. Mm -hmm. um, and so they do a full physical exam, yes, all that stuff. I okay. take a urine uh, test for glucose levels, and then um, blood pressure, weight, um, height. Um, she'll measure from the top of the stomach all the way to the bottom. We'll um, check. We didn't check blood. Oh, we'll do ultrasound to see where the baby is, to see yep. the sex of the baby. Mm -hmm. um, She's also legally supposed to send me to a hospital or a doctor if there are any complications. Mm. And, uh, Perfect. At some point, you guys started doing your own research on vaccinations, and you've chosen not we're, not, we're not doing the vaccinations uh, route. So, but you're not. At, would what what would would you to go to the doctor? Absolutely. Okay. Oh right. yes. If there was a problem, of course. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. Well, I don't know. So, oh, well, right. I'm sorry. Yeah. I shouldn't have been making but. Um, any problems, any developmental problems, medical problems, anything that concerns you? No. Never? No. Health is worse? The worst is probably him picking at his mosquito bites. I say, don't pick at your alleys. He'll never stop doing that, no. ever. No, so it'll scab, but I mean, yeah. that is literally the extent of any type of issue okay. medically or physically. I mean, he was heavier and shorter. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that, that's my guy. Yeah, I and mean, he's stout. You've seen him. He's yeah. stout. Yeah, he's. Oh, he's <laughs> yeah. He's not a chubby kid, though. He's he's stocky. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's about twenty ounces to the pound. Um, <laughs> yeah. That yeah, that's right. Get him to work. Yeah. <laughs> he's happy go lucky. So mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't know about any of this. Is John in his height weight category? Yes. But was it this? But so was it the same time that the, the helmet? Yes. Okay, so it yes. was kind of like a couple issues on the same referral. Is we that thought they were just coming for the helmet, and then she clarified for us and said. She, this documentation here says that she's fine. So yeah. I don't know what he's telling you. Right. Okay. So that's probably frustrating. Very. So she, uh, uh, three months ago she weighed 46 pounds. And about how tall is or was she three months ago? Oh. Um, you know? I don't know. I forgot. Uh, that's okay. I wouldn't know how to tell my kids are. I, I use this. That's what I was going to do. <laughs> You, well, let's say if she were standing here, what's just your ballpark where you think she'd stand to you? Or she, you, you probably know where she comes to your body. Yeah, with me standing, her head is right right up to here. I mean, she sits. Just like chest level. Yeah. Where on you. He's not chest level, so right just over the waist? Just or, over the waist. Okay. Just tall enough for great hugs. You betcha. <laughs> so he is... At two, that's actually pretty tall. Too. That's actually quite tall too. Yeah, he's gonna be a sprouty kid too, then, isn't he? Um, so now we're gonna get into a more difficult subject, and then we're gonna marry as as well, which obviously you're gonna want to talk about her, but that'll probably be difficult today. The detectives asked Tatiana about the other children in such detail because the situation is quite confusing. On August 22, 2018, a 911 call was made by Seth Welch, Tatiana's husband, whose interrogation we are watching, and father of her children. Hello? I'm not sure if I'm calling the right place, but I'm at home and one of my kids died. She's very dead, like a tree. And when the 911 dispatcher asked Seth how he was holding up, he replied, It's just another day. 
The detectives and experts who arrived were shocked by the emaciated appearance of the child's body, but as we can see, the parents are in no hurry to confess to murder. The examination showed that the girl had been dead for 72 hours already and died of exhaustion. She weighed 3.5 kilograms, which is terribly little for a 9-month-old baby. Normally, she weighed of a girl this age is 7.3, 9.9 kilograms, but the other two children were relatively normal. So it's important to understand what parenting principles the parents adhere to. And I personally already at this point, it's clear that, to put it mildly, they are unconventional. So for one, at about her six, six month mark, which would have been February, March, April, so mm -hmm. in April-ish, she had one week of sleeping a lot. Yeah. Okay. But then after that one week, she went back to the basic schedule that we just discussed. Yeah. And did her schedule ever change again? Not until recently, which I thought she was going through her nine-month growth spurt. She right. was sleeping a lot lately. So recently, her her um, her um, schedule changed again. And uh, when you say recently, about when ish was that? Three days ago. All oh, three days ago. Okay. So three days ago, what what happened then? We would. Um, so three today is Thursday. So. Uh, Tuesday, was it Monday? Tuesday, what, Tuesday? You remember what day that you were specifically remember it changing, or is it, you don't have a specific recollection of that? I don't, I don't, but I know I didn't have work. We can say Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday? Tuesday sounds fine. Um, yeah, so tell me what you noticed. She got up at, at 9 o'clock in the morning. You were so tired, weren't you? And she went to bed when? Uh, the night before that. 7 o'clock. Okay. So she got up at zero nine after going to bed at seven. Mm -hmm. And it just reminded me of when she was six months old. It was it seemed consistent. Then she would eat like crazy, and then she would doze off again, like she was ready for bed immediately after eating. So, uh, so I just okay, it's consistent with the other children and with her six month old growth spurt. So I put her down, and she'd sleep for about three hours, get up again, eat, and. It seemed like she wanted to go to bed, but I, I kept her up, and she hung out and was interactive, smiling, um, but then she'd start to fuss because she wanted to go back to bed. She was very tired, and she only likes to sleep in her bed, she, or she'll sleep in the car or mm -hmm. the truck, but... So, so um, three days ago, did things happen enough that we could establish the routine? Was she on a three-day routine? Could, like we just established two different routines that she was on. Mm -hmm. Did she have a routine the last three days? Or no, it was very. It was a bit erratic. Okay. She would. I would try and keep her up just because I was worried that she was sleeping so much. Mm -hmm. But um, when she wanted to sleep, she wanted to sleep. Was she eating? Yes, very well. And uh, I mean, the Sunday before last, we went to Golden Corral, and she just feasted. She really liked the marshmallow sweet potatoes. <coughs> so you thought this was a girl spurt, and is that because you noticed her growing again? Yes, and I remembered with my other two children. In this so at six months, we were... Yeah. And so at this, at this nine-month growth spurt, what, how, how much were you guessing her at then? Maybe 20. Okay. And when was the last time that you thought she was 20 pounds? But this is impossible because we remember that the baby weighed 3.5 kilograms when she was found and was severely malnourished. It is impossible to lose so much weight in a day. From which we conclude that everything she said is a lie. When you thought she was 20 pounds, how long would you have guessed her to be? Her 
legs would wrap around my waist. She's quite long. Because um, she was born at 20 inches, right? Mm -hmm. So her head here, and she would just wrap around the side there. So uh, 26 inches, maybe? Okay. Quite, quite long. So these last three days that she was going through her growing spurt, you were off from work Tuesday, and that's the first day that you noticed that? Yes. And then I went to work once yesterday, and I worked. And she does have a different schedule when I go to work, if you need to make note of that. Yes. What's, what's that? So in the morning, she gets up at 7, along with the other children, breakfast for her and for everyone, and that would be nursing and... and nursing for about a half hour while the kids ate, and then oatmeal. Oatmeal with maybe some maple syrup in it, or oatmeal with strawberries in it. Um, just depends. Spoon oatmeal, oatmeal or oatmeal mixed in a bottle? Spoon. Okay. Nice and chunky for her. Okay. Um, and then I'd keep her up, and she would be awake until I had to go to work. So she'd be awake, then it was time to go outside and help Daddy with the field. And we'd do weeding, or I'd sit Mary in her stroller, and she'd just sit and watch the ducks and just, just laugh at them. So you didn't work, you didn't work, was it 7? I didn't work, I'm sorry, what? You start your day again, was it, it, was it 7 o'clock that you started your day? In the morning, yeah. Um, no, I'm sorry, your work day, on your days of work, what time did you start? 3 o'clock in the morning. 3 p.m. So you'd keep her awake from 7 till 3? Till 2.30. Till 2.30. Yeah. Sorry. And so during that time that she was kept awake, how many other meals did she have? About four, possibly, yeah. So one of them was just one, nursing. Well, the 7 o'clock one was breakfast. It was nursing for 30 minutes, oatmeal, some maple syrup, or fruit, whatever you had mm -hmm. around. So when would the next meal then be on, on, on this different routine day? Oh, probably about when the kids want, would usually want a snack around 9. So it would be then. She eats maybe 9, 30, 10. And that's, um, that was when it'd be quiet time for the kids. So the kids would go in their room and have, they could read, they could sit in their bed quietly. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, okay. and then if the kids were getting too restless, then, oh, time to go back outside. Um, or they'd have to clean their room. It just depends. Yeah. But um, for yesterday, um, the kids, we went back outside. It was just so nice out. So, um, she likes to, it keeps her quiet if you go for walks in the stroller. We just went up and down the driveway, we checked the mail, we picked up garbage. Um, the wind would blow garbage from other places sometimes. Um, help Daddy with the weeding, we cut some weeds for the goat. And, uh, and then, I mean, that's another couple hours. And then it'd be about maybe 2.15. Or no, I'm sorry, it'd be about 1.30. So the last time she would have ate would have been 1.30 yesterday in the afternoon? No. Um, I'd feed her again at 1.30 and then... Um, what was that feeding? Nursing and some oatmeal. How long was that nursing? The nursing was about 20 minutes. The oatmeal was what took longer because she was about 8 ounces of oatmeal. Um, and then I would... Uh, I think the kids were just still outside. I just um, oh yeah, um, and um, resting my feet before work. I'm just standing for eight hours. That was at one thirty. Yeah. So then, um, two thirty was when Mary would finish eating. 2.30 was, yep, was the end of it, and that's when I changed her diaper again and put her, and put her down. Mm -hmm. So such a surprise to me. I mean, this morning, when I got her up, she had spit up, and I just... So yesterday morning, when you got her up at 7, she had spit up? No, this morning. Oh, this morning. At 9, when I got her up, when I tried to get her up. Yeah. I thought maybe she, she choked on, on her spit, and that's why, she, that's why. What color was her spit up? Um, it was foamy and and brown. So I thought maybe it was the, the oatmeal and the fruit mixed in there. So where was the spit up at? Um, the side of her mouth, up, um, um, the side of her face. And was that 
Did you think, and I don't know, was it food? Was it blood? No, it wasn't blood. It was not blood? No, it was, she didn't have any kind of vomiting of blood or anything like that? No, never. Okay. We would take it to a doctor if well, sure. that yeah. ever happened. So you were, you were certain it was food? Yes, essentially. And it was on her side? It was on what side of her face? Her right side. Her right side, okay. And then that's when you noticed that she was unresponsive. It was yeah. this morning when you saw that. And what what happened next? Uh, I uh, I um, she, excuse me. Um, her eyes were open. Did anything look else look strange other than obviously just stood up and that her eyes were open, or did other than that did she look as usual? So I went in to the to the, just to um, get Seth, and it's an it's an emergency, and he's like, and I was just so shocked. And he reminded me I knew CPR, and he told me to start. So I took her from the bed, and I put her on her changing table, and um, I I started CPR, and I did the the two finger touch on the chest. Just if you use your whole hand, you could break ribs, and I just didn't want to do that that's for sure. I know this is tough. So I did a two finger touch on the chest and her back, and I um, wiped her mouth, and I did. Um, so you did this on her ta on the kitchen table? No, the changing table. On oh, the changing table in the bedroom. Yes. So you said you did it on her mouth, and then you wiped her mouth. I wiped her mouth first because it was the, the, the spit up. And now that I think about it, I think it was banana and oatmeal. You know when banana's been sitting out and it's very ripe? Oh, yeah. It gets that like brownish color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but ripe banana is very sweet, and she eats the oatmeal better with it. So what did you wipe her mouth with? A baby wipe, a okay. lavender scented baby wipe. Okay, and then you did what with that? I threw it in the garbage. Okay. Well, not immediately, no, I just no. wiped her and put it to the side. Just wiped her and threw it down, yeah. Right next on the changing table. And then you picked her up out of the bed? Uh, yes, and then I put her on the changing table, and then um, when I was pumping her chest, there was like bubbles, like mm -hmm. bubbles coming out of her mouth. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I thought maybe that, that's why I thought she choked. And then maybe if I kept pumping, like it would, like maybe it would come out, and then she'd like cough and wake up. So I just kept wiping the bubbles, and I was giving her air and giving her um, pumping with my finger, which is my two fingers. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should have done more. Nope, you were doing it right. And she was still so cold, and I think maybe ten, ten minutes. I don't. It's so hard to gauge time. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And, uh, it's not just me the whole time, and he's just, he's just asking me, is she, is she dead? Is she gone? While he's crying, just asking me, is she gone? And I, it's just so hard to say yes. And I just, I just, I just said yes. She's just unresponsive. And then we had no idea what to do then at all. Like, who do, what do we... What do we do? Mm -hmm. And so he called his parents, or he called his dad first, excuse me, and his dad said, okay, your mom and I are on our way, um, call the police, let them know what happened, and um, we'll, tr we'll try and get there before they do. And then we just spent the entire time on the couch waiting and crying. We did sleep. It was just my mother-in-law doesn't. According to Tatiana, her daughter died in the morning, but the examination showed that the girl had been dead for 72 hours already. This means that for 72 hours, the parents didn't just not feed her, but didn't even notice that their daughter was dead. That is, everything Tatiana is saying here is a lie. This is noticeable in many ways. How she scratches her hands, sits in a defensive posture towards the detectives, stares into space. Her whole body says that she is not remembering how it was, but making things up. Did you believe her? I don't know why. Who cares? Why would we? So, so this morning you found her about nine o'clock, and did you? Is that the what time you woke up? No. No, I woke up at around 7. The kids are very consistent with their wake-up time at 7. Mm -hmm. And and she's always up at 7. Uh, yes. 
Except when she's going through a growth spurt, she'll sleep in until about 9 or 10. Okay. Which is why I went to check in on her at 9, and I wondered why she wasn't up yet. Okay. But last night when I came home, I I opened the door just a tad so we could make that noise. And it's her Actually, you finished feeding her at 2.30. Yep. And you put her to bed at 2.30. And that was the last time you saw her because you went to work then. But then you came home at 11.30, and when you opened the door, you saw movement from her. Mm -hmm. You're certain you saw movement Absolutely. from her? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Or else I would have said... Uh-huh. So, did you go any further into that room other than just looking through the door? No. The crack in the door? I did not. Was it the hole in the door or the crack in the door that you looked at? It was the hole in the door. I didn't open the door completely. I just pushed it enough so it would make the noise. It's a very old, creaky door. So I pushed it enough. It makes the noise. It doesn't open the door completely. And she nudges because she hears it. And I just peek at her. I see her moving. And she's... What did, when you say that you saw her moving, well, how did you see her move? Can you describe that? She was laying on her back still. Um, her blanket wasn't kicked off. And I only wrapped it right around the knees down to her feet to keep her feet warm. Um, and she had her polar bear, but she likes to play with her polar bear before she goes to bed, so she kicked it off to the side. Um, she was laying on her back. Her head was turned to the left side of it. So when I um, pushed the door open, she jerked her arm a little and turned her head. So I could see that her eyes were still closed. She was squinting a bit. Like, what was that? And then it's okay, and that's what, that's what she does. And what time would that have been? Around 11.30, 11.45, like, we'll just say 11.30. I came home, I was still in my uniform. I came home and I um, brought lemon at home and a burger and I just set it down at the table and I looked inside and I did that and, I, and then I went into the room with Seth. So, when, but, but she went to bed at three, wouldn't it be odd, wouldn't, wouldn't it be odd like for Seth that she's still in bed when he went to bed? She's in bed at, I mean, she went to, she went to sleep at 2.30. She's done this before, and so have our other kids, which is why we thought if she's sleeping, we're going to let her sleep. Well, yeah, I mean, I get that, but you, you saw her, and we saw her, and she's tiny. Tatiana, we're all parents in this room, Okay. We, and we all need to be honest. Do you remember in, in the car when I first talked with you and I told you that at the end of the day, we all need to know exactly... Look carefully at her facial expressions. This is the typical mimicry of sociopaths, psychopaths, people with problems with empathy and emotional spheres. Their mimicry is exaggerated, reminiscent of theater or cinema. This is Eileen Warren's Gary Ridgway, Danny Rowling. They all committed heinous crimes and felt no remorse about it. You'll agree their facial expressions are similar to Tatiana's, and the tears she sheds are crocodile tears. Right. Okay. So we need to tell her story. Okay. And I want you to think about this for a minute. I want you to think for a second and put yourself in our shoes. You're the police officer, you're the police detective. You get called out to that home today. You get called to my home or his home today. Okay? You, the police officer. And then you have to go into that house and you have to look at that that precious little angel. Okay? Do you think she was healthy, honestly? When you look at her size and you can see every single bone in her body, do you think she was healthy? We know this isn't easy, Tatiana, but we need to know what happened to her. What was going on? But well, when did she start losing all that weight? Two days. But she, she she's lost so much weight that you can't lose that much in two days. She I've never seen a child that skinny. Really? Never. And here's the thing. You're obviously a very concerned mom 
But at what point, at what point did you know, what, what, what point did you think something was wrong? Because I know that you knew something, or you thought something wrong. You are an intelligent, educated woman. And at some point, you felt something was wrong. At what point did she, she, she can't even weigh eight pounds right now. She doesn't weigh eight pounds. When's the last time that you actually inspected her, that you looked at her? Tell me the truth. Every time when I change her, and I think I just may have been just, just so blinded. I... And now Tatiana is finally telling the truth. She really didn't take much care of her baby. Bathing a baby once every two weeks is terrible. What were you blinded by? Because I know, listen, you are an intelligent, articulate, college-educated, early childhood development. You know. You know when you look at someone that something's wrong. I have a picture of her right here. I'm prepared to show you. That tells you. No medical treatment. As dumb as I am, I'm not near as intelligent as you. I can't speak the words you can speak. I am not you. And even I can look at this photo and I can say, whoa, something's wrong. It put tears in our eyes when we walked in there. It was that obvious. Tatiana, I'm going to be quite honest with you right now, okay? One parent to another, right? And I'm going to try and control my emotions, all right? I've been to a child death investigator school, and I've seen photos and images of children that have been malnourished. And I'm telling you right now, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. Oh no, really? Yes. Oh. You, you clearly need help too, though. You're gonna okay. be dealing with this, this is baggage, this is something that, but all I wanna know is what stopped you from seeking help? You knew something was wrong. What stopped you? Tell us the truth. I mean, are you guys that financially strapped? I mean, what is it? Do you not believe in health care? Do you, I mean, do you have religious beliefs? I mean, what is it? At, we do have religious beliefs, and I, we just, we were praying about it, and, and we have faith that, that... When did you start praying about it? I mean, when she was born, but consistently and, and heavily the past three, three, four days. So three, four days ago, you started praying. What were your prayers? Please help her gain weight. Please. She's, she's eating wise and it's sticking. Like, I, why? Like, I, she ate so much. Like, but so why? 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 it's stick. I have a strong faith as well, a very strong faith, and I think God answers prayers. I'm with you on that. I also think God puts people in places to help people, but we all have our own beliefs. But here's what I'm saying is that you you guys knew enough was wrong to start heavily and consistently praying. Why didn't we seek help? You knew. No, no, no. Say you, anything to Seth. I, Seth had to know. He doesn't ever hold her. Yes, but he was also very um, faithful and, and trusting God and, and trusted that, that it would be okay and didn't think we needed to bring her to a doctor. We knew. How, how long did you know this? Then it doesn't happen in three days. It doesn't happen in four days. So when did you dilute yourself? When did you start? When did this condition start? I think within a month it started to become a little bit up and down. 
wish her cheeks would be full and and bright and, and then a couple of days later she would she would look ill or hungry and then we're not hungry, just just her cheeks wouldn't be as full as they were. Shrunken then. Yeah. And then So when did you notice that she had other bones showing? About a month. Well, well, let me ask you this. When was the last time you bathed her? Oh, um, maybe two weeks ago. So about a month ago, you you notice that her bones are all showing, right? And so is that when you started happily praying? No, it was, it was the past few days because uh, about a month ago it would be like full and then, you know, two days later it would be sunken in, but then within the day it would be full again. But then the past few days, it wouldn't fill up as quickly as, as it used as it did. But listen, here's what I'm saying, Mary. Listen, I get that, but her legs were as small as my pointer finger. So you that that didn't happen in three days. No. And I know that you know that, and I know that you wanted to get her help, but I'm trying to just figure out. When did this happen? I understand that maybe you started seeing some kind of symptoms a month ago, but when when did she consistently lose all of this weight? When did she consistently become skin and bones? I think it was within the month. Cause so she, she was always just so so thin, and so within a month. So then why, when we had a month to look at her like this, why, why didn't we get help? Because we thought, we thought she'd get better without getting help. How did you think she was going to get better? By feeding her and, and, and being with her. Was she really truly eating the way that you were telling us? Yes. I, Be, I because, it, you know, if, if you want, he has a photo of her, and if you want to see it, I mean, she, I'm pretty sure that I explained this to both you and Seth when you were in my car with me. Um, you know, she's there's going to be an autopsy done, okay? And there was a medical, uh, a person from the medical examiner's office at the house, okay? So we're going to know all this, what we're saying. Yeah. But, and, and you're not you're not a bad person. We get all this, and we get that there's, there's a dynamic here that we're trying to figure out. There is a dynamic here, and I'm going to tell you, I, I know it. I can... I know there's a dynamic, and I feel that you wanted to get her help. I'm trying to just figure out why you didn't. What's the dynamic? What am I missing? Because you can't tell me that this Brooklyn, New York, this New York College, City College, Educated Grand Rapids Community College, Early Childhood person didn't know that this girl needed help, but something stopped her. I just am trying to figure out what it is. What stood between you and help? I think that I was just... I think I was worried about another CPS call from the doctors, and I thought that um, Mary would get better and it would be okay. But at what point did you get better? So two, three days ago, you thought she wasn't going to get better. So then why didn't we call then? What? Because I thought that I was being doubtful. And I, I, I. You, th you thought you were being doubtful of Christ? Yes. I, I thought I was uh, lessening in my faith and I just. Uh... Is that. What Seth thought, Joe? That I was being doubtful. No, I want to know out of you two, which one, which which one of you wanted to go to take her to the doctor? I know he didn't, and I, I didn't for a long time, and until recently, it just became a little thought in my head that maybe we should, and then I was worried about CPS and about about. Just losing faith. We've had issues with CPS before, and I just didn't want to lose this kid. So you, you, you thought you thought you lose you thought you were losing faith by thinking you needed to go to the doctor. That yeah, that I wasn't having faith in God to fix this. Mm -hmm. I feel stupid about it now.
So, so I'm, that's what we're that's see, that's what we're trying to figure out. Do you think? And I'm not ridiculing this. I just want to know. Do you guys think that that God doesn't want us to use doctors? No. So you, do you think God puts people in places to help us? Yes, I do. I believe that for sure. And you think doctors could be those people? Yeah. So. All still, I, I, I get what you're saying, but, but this is what I'm telling you. Two days ago, I could have looked at this child, and I could have said, this child has hours to live. Two days ago, I could have looked at this child, and I, I probably would have thought, this child has minutes to live. Two days ago, if I'd have seen this child in your hands, being a stranger at Myra, I'd have snatched this child out of your hands and faced the consequences. That's what I'm trying to reason with is that you, so, but you didn't, you didn't receive the help and you knew that two days ago, you knew, you just said that, you, that she was probably, what did you say, beyond help or whatever it was two days ago. So, what, not beyond help. I just... At what point? At what point in this illness did you think there's a good chance she's going to die? I didn't think at all that she was going to die. I, I How could you not think that? Delusional. I, just, I don't have a reason why I couldn't think that. I was just being such a hopeful mom. I suppose I I don't have a good reason for you. Sorry. What was your conversations like with Seth? You said a minute ago that you knew that he didn't want to go to a doctor. Yeah, because well, we discussed it before. That we just Dis discussed her conditions. Yes. When was the first time you guys discussed that? Maybe a month ago. So a month ago is when. What did you notice a month ago? Because I'm I'm certain you're the one. Because you said that you know Seth didn't want to go. So obviously you're the one that brought up needing to go to the doctor. What did you notice a month ago? That she was almost nine months old and just wasn't filling into her clothing like she should. And, and you know, we talked about it and you just, just have faith and just we'll keep feeding her like we do and keep nursing her and keep her active and she'll get there. It's okay, she'll get there. But... Let me ask you something. If Seth told you that God told him to sacrifice one of your children, would you do it? No. That's what I'm saying, though. I'm, that's what I'm trying to wrap my head around. How many conversations did you have with Seth about this? Would he get angry talking about it? No, I think he'd be very sure. What would happen? What would he? How would he react if you took him to the took her to the doctor anyway? I'm not sure. It, something like that has never happened. Um, I'm just asking to speculate. I think he would just be concerned that CPS would be called, but. Mm -hmm. Not angry, just say, okay, just know that you took to the doctor, expect CPS to come to the house. He, he's not an angry type person? No. How, no. How is he as far as emotional goes? He, uh, he's not afraid to cry, I'll we'll just say that. Does he, he cry a lot? Does he, does he, would you say that he wears his emotions on his sleeve? I suppose. I yeah. mean, I went, when we were going through our, our marriage, the beginning of it, and he was very expressive about how um, about his feelings and, and how he would like to be treated and how I wasn't excuse me I'm treating him well and and then in return told me he realized that he wasn't being a respectful husband and wasn't treating me well either so he's very intuitive and he was and expressive which is rare I suppose so. Today, at 9 o'clock, 
you found very deceased. At what time were we called? I don't know. I think it was... Was it 11? Yeah, it was like a long time. That, why? We called, we called my in-laws first and... The, t the time that the Sheriff's Department was called to respond to your house was at 12.06. That's when they Three. came or that's when they were called? That's when 911 was called. That's when 911 was called, it was 12.06. Three hours and six minutes later. My father-in-law said to wait until um, they were close, because they live an hour away, to wait until they were close before we called so we can get there at the same time. That would explain two, that would explain one hour. What about the other two hours and six minutes of waiting? I think that we were in such a state of shock that we just didn't know what to do. Well, let me ask you this. Did you ever look at at how tiny and sunken and skeletal she looked and say, we're in trouble? Did you guys have a discussion about him? No. Did he say anything to you about that? No. Did you why, why, why did it come across your mind? What were you thinking? Is that why it took so long to call 911? I've, I've never worked a case that's taken that long to call 911. This has just never happened before or with anyone we knew. or We waited for a response from my father-in-law mm -hmm. to see what his advice was. We had no idea what to do. And he said, yes, yeah, she should call the police. We're on our way. Wait until we're close. But but even even by um, your father-in-law, he wasn't even called until around approximately 10.30 to 10.45. So we're still looking at an hour and a half. It may have been after 9 then because that is a very long time and it did not feel that long at all. It must have been just before 10 then. I'm sorry if, if I gave you the no, wrong no, time. No, no, no. You, you're not yeah. expected to, to, to check your watch every time you go check something. We're not holding it all those times. I know it was before 10, but it was definitely after 9. That is an excessively long time to just stand around there. That's, so so all right, let's, let's even just give the benefit of the doubt and say it's 10. Okay. That it's 10 o'clock. So, because like you said, you know it was before 10, but we'll just play it safe and say it was 10. Okay. And so 10 o'clock rolls around, you, 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 you check everything, you did CPR for about 10 minutes, according to what you told me. So then what what'd you do for the next two hours? Because well, that's still... That's, well, we waited. Yeah. Um, before you called us, you waited for two hours before we got called. We waited for my in-laws to come. We were trying to contact them. And then we, we got a response. Um, well, we were trying to contact them. Was that like a long process to get all of them? I actually don't know. I'm sorry. I was just, I was just, uh, Seth was the one that contacted them. I didn't. Oh, I see. Okay. So I don't know how long it took, if any time at all. I was just very, um, just very distraught. So you said you slept. What else, what other kind of house cleaning did you do? Because you said your mother-in-law doesn't like a dirty house. <laughs> um, the kids. Just to distract them, I just had them clean their room, put your toys away, and... Did they know what was going on? We told them, but I don't... I assume they didn't call for so long because they were thinking about whether to call at all, or if they could get rid of the body, and also coming up with an adequate explanation for everything that happened. Yes, it sounds crazy, but we are dealing with a family of psychopaths, and for them, this is normal. In their rooms, and then what did you and Seth do? We slept, and then we hugged and cried, and then we just sat on the couch and just, just were silent. Yeah, but you know, there's just some odd thing. Obviously, you know, you know this case is odd, and 
You never once expressed to Seth that, hey, this doesn't, this isn't good. Look at her. Look at her. No, I didn't. Did he ever, did he ever even make a comment about her body? You guys looked at her, and he never, he never said anything about it. No. You know how he described her to us on the phone? I can, you can listen to the 911. He described her as, nope, she's dead as a doornail. He gets, he gets like that when he's very, very upset. He's just, just distraught. And he, I cry, and yeah, he cries, but he tries to be strong for everyone. Let me ask you a question. You, you had been through some training, or early childhood development schooling and stuff like that, correct? Yeah. Did you ever receive or go through any kind of like CPR training or, or anything like that? I have, yeah. Okay. Let me ask you this. If you were driving down the road, kids are in the back seat in their car seats and you're driving down the road and you witness a car accident, what what are you going to do? And, and there's people that are bloody there at the scene. What are you going to do? I, and my kids are with me in the car? Mm-hmm. Well, I, if there's safe for me to pull over, I'd pull over. I would check to see if anyone's responsive, and then I'd call the police so I can let them know what was going on. And if there's something I could do, I'd, I'd try it. But I know that if there's any sort of injury that I'm not familiar with, I can't move the body. Okay, so you know that you can call 911, right? Yes. So then why not call 911 immediately when your child's not moving? That's what I don't understand. I think because it happened to me personally. I was just, it was my, my little girl. I, in shock. I, I, I'm sorry. I don't have an answer for you. I was just so never could imagine that could happen. J Jason and I have been doing this a long time, and I understand, and I've seen it time and time again. Everybody deals with stress and reacts to things differently. But if there's one thing that I've I've seen in the course of of doing this job for a long time is there's usually never a hesitation to pick up the phone and call 911. Mm -hmm. That is a pretty ingrained, basic. rapid, basic, life-saving response that is ingrained in everybody, especially in our country because of our emergency medical system that we have. When and did you first teach your kids about 911? When did I'm sorry, when? when did you first teach your children about 911? So when you're doing CPR, you don't scream to Seth, call 911. No. And I, wow, and I know that that's like the second step, or the first, the first step, actually. Did you think by calling 911 that he would think your faith was less? No, not at all, actually. I, okay. We just, he called his dad first, yeah. wiping the spit up from her face, and then he went to contact his parents. I don't know how long that took. I was just, just after she wasn't responding, I was just sitting there rocking her. I don't know for how long. I, I have no idea for how long. And then after he got off the phone with his dad, um, his dad said, okay wait until we are close so and then call the police so we can get there at the same time they do so we can help with any anything i suppose legally so um the two plus hours of time that went by from discovery till 911 all, all I know, and I'm just asking if you can think of anything else, all I know of is 10 minutes of CPR and sitting on the couch and sweeping the house. Is there any other activity that occurred? Again, some of the stuff is just so weird, we're just trying to make sense of it. I understand. I, if I were in your position, I, I, would, I wouldn't understand it either, and I'm having trouble gauging it as well. As well. I, I spent quite some time just holding her and just, just rocking her and then I put her back down on her bed and I put a, put a blanket on her and then I just checked on the kids make sure they were clean in the room and then... Did you put any additional clothing on her when you put her back in the crib? No, I didn't. So what was in the crib is exactly what was in there? You didn't change anything? Oh, I'm sorry, by clothing I just assumed you meant what she was wearing on her. That was left on her. I added her, I covered her up fully, and I added her little head, her little head blanket. You? What do you mean you covered her fully with clothing or oh, a with blanket? Oh, with a gray blanket. Okay. 
Was that blanket in the crib prior or not? Yes, up to her knees. I, I put it, I wrap it around her knees down to her feet just so that she no more chance of over the head pulling. Mm -hmm. She's never done that before anyway. And what about this thing that you were talking about, the head pillow or whatever? Where was that it at? It was just a comfy blanket. It was on the side on the rocking chair. I just, I just so that's the only thing that wasn't in the crib? Was that one? Yeah. And she had her polar bear in there, but it was by her feet. So, um... And I was... I was happy with how much she was eating. She was eating so much. It's like, this is such a surprise to me. And is there an actual condition that prevents weight gain? Did you ever Google that? No. Maybe. And maybe I did and I didn't find anything. Because I, 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 would, I would probably know. And, and if a doctor was... You would have found a lot, I think, if you Googled it. I think you'd, I think you'd have found a lot on that. Let me ask you this. Do you think that you realize too much on WebMD and, and Google as a parent instead of actually going to a doctor? It's just an opinion question. I'm, I'm just curious. I do. Because you've, you've, you, you've, you've kind of brought that up a couple times, and I'm just wondering. If I, like, replace it? What, yeah, I mean, do you kind of try to self-diagnose your children instead of taking them to a doctor? You just look um, it all up on WebMD and Google and try and figure it out yourself, or? No, I do that more for myself. Um, the only thing I actually have to feed whatever age she was at at the time to help her gain more weight. Um, and, you know, potatoes, et cetera. So when you were going through early childhood development education, it was that to be a teacher or a preschool teacher or daycare owner, operator type, that's, that's for, right? Yeah, it was, it was to be a, a preschool teacher. So I know, I know I'm sure this was addressed, so what are some of the things they, they told you to look out for if you did have a student that came to school and, and had a um, failure to thrive type case? Not eating. Um, what physical characteristics? Thin, bones. Mm -hmm. Like sunken in cheeks? Ribs. Ribs showing. Thin arms. Yeah. Did you see those things in your own child? Yes. So when you went through this education and you were, you, and they, they told you to look out for that stuff, what, what was supposed to be your plan of action if you ever saw a child come to school like that? To call Child Protective Services. Because you had a what to report? You'd have a duty, right? Yes. Did you, so, so, but you didn't help your child? But, but two, two to four days ago, you knew it was really bad. Tuesday. Tuesday, you knew it was really bad. And so that is what prompted you more than ever to be checking and looking to make sure she wiggles when you move a door and because of how she looks. Every day, regardless, if that matters. Okay, yeah, it does matter, absolutely. Every, every day, every night. No, no, nobody, Tatiana, for, for one second, I don't want you to think that anybody is trying to say that you didn't love your child. No. Okay, but I am going to be blatantly honest with you. You didn't pro provide the necessary care for your daughter. You, you didn't. Do you and think you did? And we're just trying to figure out why. Do, do you think you did right? It's a very hard question to answer because she's dead. So no, but I tried. I fed her so But what much. stopped you? Tr truly, what stopped you? From what? Fr from, get, from getting her help a month ago. Was it embarrassment? Was it fear? Was it... I, I mean, think, what was it? I think it was, it was fear of CPS. I, I think that I just thought that I was overreacting, and it was just all in my head because I, I, I tend, I tend to, to.
to overthink things when it's not necessary, and I just thought that was another one of those. Mm-hmm. And our other two children are just so healthy, and or am I delusional about that too? Uh, like, I don't know. I don't, I don't as know. far as they appear, I mean, they. What? But here's the difference, though. You just said it right there. You just said it. As far as they appear. But we know it hasn't appeared healthy. So that it's not a delusion. It's an observation that your other two children clearly appear healthy, right? And clearly didn't. That's comparing apples and oranges. So it shows that your observations were working. You weren't delusional. You know that these two appear healthy and this one didn't. So we need to go ahead and get this one fixed. Figure out what's wrong with her. I know we have more time for her to, to fill out. Mm-hmm. Well, let me ask you this. Did, did, you, did you plan on having each of your children? No. No? Oops. We knew we were having unprotected, unprotected sex and we knew we were going to have a baby from it. We just weren't saying, okay, this day we're going to make the child and she will be born this day. Right. But... Real... Oops. Tasha, we, I hate to interrupt. We have to step out real quick, though. Can we get you a water or anything? Well, uh, we're just going to just slide over real quick and talk to Seth oh, and yes, just confirm some sure. of the stuff. I'm sure you guys He's probably sure. he's sitting on ice right now, probably wondering what in the world's going on. So. Tatiana was left alone after being told that you were going to talk to her husband. Now we can see how nervous she is waiting for the detectives to return, which once again proves that she fully understands what is happening, is aware of her guilt and wonders what her husband will say. Let's get a little closer look at the Welch Fusari family. You can see photos of the signs hung around the perimeter of their farm. They adhered to quite orthodox Christian views. They were against vaccinations and medicine, due to which fasting for an infant could easily fit into their worldview. But personally, I think it was much simpler. The parents just didn't care about the infant, not providing her with proper care or nutrition. And they could clearly see that the baby was not well, but didn't want to spend money on a doctor or food for her. During the inspection of their home, many flies, mouse droppings, and very little baby food were found. And the mattress of baby Mary was covered in mold and looked like it hadn't been washed in a very long time. Seth basically said the same thing he said. Except for Seth, that he, he did say that you'd have to strap him and his family down to the table before a doctor could touch you guys. You don't agree with that? I... You don't have that same belief? I do, for the most part, but except for the... I mean, if somebody had a broken leg, he tends to be a bit dramatic. Um, he grew up reading Shakespeare. Oh, that, yeah. That else, maybe you can tell. Yeah. yeah. He's um, a smart guy, though. Very. Yeah. And he's, he's very passionate and dramatic, so I'm not surprised he said that, but... Um, so he said that his mom, starting two about a month ago, has been telling him, I don't know if she's told you, that, oh, yeah. that that child needs some medical care. Yes, she has. How many times has she told him that? I don't know how many times she's told him. How she many times has she told you that? Once that I can remember. Okay. And how long ago was that? About a month ago. Okay. When she, I last saw her. Now he said that she was just at your house, not this last Sunday, but the Sunday before that. That. Yeah. Maybe, because we went to Golden Corral, so it could have been a few days before that, and he could be mixing Sundays up. Okay. Um, but it was definitely within the month. It's just... Um, and again, they leave her alone. You already know that this is an interrogation technique designed to catch the suspect of guard. She's feeding, and then asked if I thought about the doctor. I told her, no, we're not worried about it, we're just praying about it. She said, okay. Well, her, her cheeks are looking fuller, so at least there's that. Just keep on feeding her. She was saying that because of her weight. Yes. 
Mm-hmm. Have you guys discussed or went with you before? I only recall that being the first real time. Okay. When was the second time? Um, when she came to visit. I've, within the month. I'm, I that says it was, it was the Sunday before last. It, it may have been, and I could, we could have went to Golden Corral the Sunday before. Yeah, and it doesn't matter. Okay. And what did she say that time? She suggested and she asked um, if we were going to she, she, excuse me, she suggested that we noted that her cheeks are redder and fuller, so um thought that she was taking her food well. Okay. All right, well, we're going to try to get you guys out of here right now. I'm just going to step out and talk to him real quick and just make sure we don't have more follow-up questions so we don't have to keep bothering you tonight. So let me just, okay. just take a couple minutes with him. I left so. my salad in the back of your car, I'm sorry. You left your what? My salad, it's just garbage. That's all right. You're not, you don't need it? No. I'll throw, I'll throw it away, it's okay. So, I'll, uh, uh you just a couple minutes, okay? Okay. Hi, baby. Hi. How you doing? I'm happy that I'm with you now. Me too. Did you talk to your parents at all while you were waiting? How was going on? Yeah, we're not. Because we're such bad parents. Not even allowed to talk to them. To call the police after uh-huh. finding out. I told you like six times. I was waiting for the lawyer to be there because we knew that this would happen. So I told them we were waiting for. We did see your parents, but I said the lawyers. And we were just. Then what'd you do while you were waiting? I called off work. I. We slept. And cried. Like, and listen, baby. You, their job is to fill cells. It's their job. So they can fill two cells right now. And that's. I asked me if you were angry. Like it sounded like they were trying. I don't know if this is movie mind, but like separate us. That's what they're doing. Like, trying to drive a wedge in between and then hope somebody accuses the other one. That's why they came at you first. Because they're, because they know them. Mm-hmm. They can tell by looking at me. Yeah. They ain't gonna do shit to me. So if I'm gonna do breakdown and accuse you, uh, me is who they're looking for. I really like to not talk about it at all anymore today. Okay. It's so terrible. It's so terrible. Can't ever do this again. We at least gotta take her. We gotta. If there's problems. We gotta take him to the doctor at least to see. Okay. Yep. Well, uh, I was counting down. It's hilarious. I think they must have heard me on the phone. 
Yeah, that's uh, coming on at 7.30. I'm getting up out of here. Um, getting us out of here. And that was exactly when they came through the door to come talk to me. Wow. Yeah, I was like, I'll, I'll wait for, I'll wait till 7.30, but we're not under arrest. I'm not being charged. I'm here under my own compulsion. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm free to go, so. Your parents are still there? No, they went home. They had to go meet with a CPS worker in Grand Haven. But the future with them? Yeah. And I was just about to walk out of there when he said, hey, come on down here. So I was going to be like, oh, he said five minutes. It's going to be another two hours. And you know, he had me put my phone out beside the door. Oh, he did? Yeah, no, I went out. I got it. I went out. I got it. I'm not gonna let you just hold me in here indefinitely, but uh, with my permission, while leaving me communication with. I saw the. I saw like papers in the bottle cap and the lighter was out there. Cause they told me to run past my school to the bathroom, and it was like twenty thirty minutes. I really had to go. So I just opened the door and I went to the bathroom. And then uh, they're they're trying to make you seem a lot more like a prisoner than you really are. Right now, you're here, under your own, you're here under your own compulsion and I'm not sure. Yeah. It's really not much they can do if we wanted to walk out right now. We're doing this as a show. And not even for them, but for probably when we have to go up in front of a judge. is all they want. They want to charge. They want somebody. There's got to be money involved. There's got to be a financial transaction. So it's like you can't, you can't go just bury a dead body. You gotta, you gotta pay somebody. There's gotta. Be. It was a junk full of growth hormones and steroids. I mean, I'm sorry, you know. You think I'm happy about it? These are authentic. Yeah, they were kind of like pushing me about a whole doctor thing. I was like, you know what the number one leading cause of death in this country is? Kind of stopped. Because <laughs> they were only in there with me for about like ten minutes. Was it? They were trying to squeeze you and get you to say something. That I did something. Pay attention to their facial expressions. It's like a competition to see who can make the most naturalistic grimace. These two are absolutely unlike grieving parents, and Seth is more concerned with how the interrogation went. They are definitely not telling the truth about the last months of their daughter's life. It's a murder case, man. It's an accident. I don't know what that was putting somebody in jail going to do. Right. It's going to fill a cell. That's what they're here to do. For profit system.
Who? Somebody. And I said, and you haven't spoken to him then. He may have been shy, but he hasn't interacted with anybody, so he wasn't, he wasn't interacted with to be verbal. There, it was... Dude, put me on fucking trial. I'll put the whole system on. I'll put the whole system on trial. Put me on trial. You don't know who you're fucking with. Right. You gotta understand with cops, they're not really like. They're just trying to get somebody to confess to a crime. That's all they're trying to. They don't care if they lie. They don't care how they make it. They don't care. So you just don't take it personally. And you just, yep, whatever. I don't care what you do. I like to put us together. That was nice. Probably. I don't care. The thing is, they want something so bad, but they don't want to have anything. They, they, you know, they could get negligent, they probably get negligent in bed, child endangerment at best, which, have, have fun. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried to go, go into court about that with my mom. Okay. I'm not. doesn't bother me. I don't want to, but I'm also not a frown. It doesn't, it's not so bad. I mean, it's some sort of hurt her. Oh, goodness. Oh, I'm oh, hungry. Yeah. They try to worship the religious extremist angle with me, too. Super. They're looking for somebody to say something crazy. They're looking for the crazy. That's what they're looking for. Yeah. They're looking for their way in. Don't butter me up. We know you're an intelligent woman. Just here to help, Tati. Okay. Just remember that they're just here to help. Keep well, yeah, I tell you. If you didn't say it so much, I'd maybe believe you. <laughs> Who are you trying to convince? Sorry guys, trying. We're just trying to make sure we have all the paperwork and everything that we need to get you guys out of here. Um, I already did a form like this with your husband, so I'm gonna go over it with you. Um, your phone was back at the house, and we collected that as part of our search warrant back at your house. Um, so there's two ways that we can go through your phone. Okay, I can either get you to sign a consent form, or I can get a search warrant signed by a judge to go through it. So it, it's completely up to you. If you are willing to sign a consent form, I have a form here that I can go over with you and allow you to read. And if you're willing to, um, we can do that. So it's up to you. I don't mind signing it. I'm just curious as to why you need to go through that. It's just it, it, so part of any investigation, people, most everybody has a cell phone on them. Mm -hmm. 
and we would just be looking at communication, verifying timelines as far as when he called his dad and oh, if there was any text message conversations between you guys regarding the, the well-being of your daughter. To, I mean, it's just that stuff, just to verify that everything is on the up and up. Okay. 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 All right. We finally we had some car shuffling going on around. The guy that's actually going to give you a ride is my sergeant that was in talking with you guys here with me. Okay. So um, I think he's just grabbing his keys and we're going to get you out of here. Okay? done like later tomorrow do you think that you'll be at home mm -hmm. there's you won't be at your parents in Grand Haven or anything so no so if I just drop because I'm not gonna have a way to call you guys so no, if I just I'll be come, home. come up there you guys will be there yep okay No, I just, I just, I know, I'm just, what a mess. What a mess. I can't tell if she, she can go for another day or two. At least they left us the truck. Oh, that was, there's a ticket on the windshield. Great. I might actually have some respect for them. I just told my mom, I was like, how many dipshit cops can be staring around, standing around an expired uh, license plate tag and not even notice?
Yeah, I tried to get him before anybody showed up. I figured they'd probably kill him too. Alright, can we, can we get out of here? You must bring me a ride for a ride down here anyway. for a while before they came in and talked to you or they pretty much come right in. Let me sit for just 20 minutes at most, not very long. And they're in here with you for a while. Yeah, because they're like distracting with sick time details, eating and pooping habits from like birth to now and the kids developmentally and cognitively and physically. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I can't care what people like think of you or stuff, because if you yeah. do, you'll get trapped and yeah. shit like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying. Yeah, they're just trying to butter you up. You guys ready to go? Yes, sir. All right, I'll give you a ride back up there. Thank you. You want another cup or anything? Or no. okay. This is the first interrogation after the discovery of the girl's body. Here we have seen several important points. Tatiana clearly says she played well. They are obviously concerned about what might be found on their phones. They do not look at all like grieving parents. Subsequently, they will be charged with murder and child abuse and their guilt will be proven. Both will receive life sentences. Tatiana will change her testimony several times and ultimately blame everything on her religious fanatic and abusive husband, who allegedly beat her, raped her, forbade her from seeing doctors, and generally brainwashed her. But in the first interrogation, she doesn't look like a typical victim of abuse. And in her interview, we saw today there is not a word about domestic violence. Both Tatiana and Seth are currently in prison.